Really? And a salad. Because <laughs> so when I filmed you earlier, you right. were doing you you're doing a number of things, but you also had yeah. notvogue.com. Right. Now, can we talk about it? Yeah, let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah, what's... So, not from. Well, it's reached a level of saturation that it now has 13,000 unique readers. Hmm. Global. Hmm. And they've read 75,000 individual pages of posts. So, the brand is established. Okay. And... Um, if people don't know, what was the impetus for launching? I mean, lit literally, it was just reading this interview with the former uh, editor-in-chief of Paris Vogue, Corinne Reutfeld, in the fall of 2010, and a journalist asked her a very kind of simple, direct question, which was, uh, how do you decide who gets into Vogue? And her answer was, you're Vogue or you're not Vogue. So I thought, yeah, uh, 1,000 people in the world are Vogue and seven billion people on the planet are not folk. Whoa, yeah. So yeah. I'm more interested in seven billion people and yeah. how they're moving through their individual lifetimes than those 1,000. Because those 1,000 are pretty much uh, living, you know, metaphorically in a birdcage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're uh, pampered pets, uh, whether of corporations or their family heritages or, uh, you know, a little luck. You know, someone thought they were pretty, <laughs> or, you know, something like that. And, how, how, what uh, kind of feedback have you gotten? Um, it's kind of interesting. Of the somewhat 13,000 people, I would say I've had, I don't even think five. I think five people have emailed me and said, don't send it to me anymore, out of 13,000, okay? Whoa. And then I have about 20 people that email me and go, this is the most amazing thing I've ever read in my life. Uh, you know, I'm thinking the same thoughts. And then there's basically, you know, that's only about 25 people. So basically 13,000 people are reading it. I think in most cases either being entertained or they're in disbelief. Yeah. And I guess the biggest disbelief, what does Andrew Ventura, what does Vogue say? What, what kind of oh, they don't. They're silent. They're absolutely silent because uh, they can't, what do, what do they say? Yeah, what do you say? It's about my that? it's my life. Uh, uh, it's my point of view. Uh, I am completely protected by the, you know, freedom of speech. Uh, it's I think probably what fascinates them is there's no commercial aspect whatsoever. It's been going on for 13 months. There's no ads. I don't use Twitter. I don't use Facebook. I don't use Instagram. I don't use, um, uh, there's no advertising whatsoever on the site. Where, no where's your inspiration or your, your, your um, content ideas coming from? Mostly it's just, it's accumulation of the last like 30, 40 years oh, of awesome. being in the world and then something triggers something, I'll read something or hear something or someone will say something to me and then it just gets How, how is this like an uh, like extension of Stephen Mark Klein? How's I mean, an extension of me? Yeah. Well, you know... Because for those who don't know, really you're isn't. architect, brand... Yeah, guy. it really is an extension of me. It's an extension of uh, Steve Oakland, who he gets quoted uh, a lot on the website. And it's... Who's you know, Steve Oakland for? for uh, that's, you know, that's... You know, he's a very private guy. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to be known. Yeah. So is it, is it Vogue or is it... Is it um, or Vogue, is it Vogue and others? Is it Vanity Fair and others? Well, again, uh, it... for a second I did own notvanityfair.com and I still do own notwwd.com, but they don't make any point. They're so, I mean, Vogue is a global word. Yeah. It's a globally understood point of view. 
uh, it reaches across all age groups and all demographics and all nationalities. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I think currently there are 18 separate international editions of Vogue every month. No, 19. So that's, that's well, it's not 19. The stepbrother. You know, uh, evil twin. Uh, and, um, you know, they really, I think it's, I think they thought I would stop or whoever they think is doing it would stop. Uh, a few people know I'm doing it and I think they've been pretty good about not really telling anyone else I'm doing it. Yeah. And uh, it almost doesn't matter at this point. I think I pretty much established that it's not Stephen Klein, the photographer, which I never was trying to use his, mm. you know, image or credibility. Because your name always gets confused sometimes, it right? It used to be. It used to be. Uh, I don't think really anymore. Uh, uh, a decade ago, it really did. Um, so, actually, Steve, I'm curious. What insight would you share with people about what you've learned about um, having, a, having a blog, having an online space? Because you're doing it. Well, again, because. This is not commercial, because, but because it's. it's there's no commercial goal, and I think most people are trying to figure out how to make money from their blogs, yeah. especially in the life and style categories. There's um, no feedback mechanism. Mm. You can't, uh, you know, there's just no feedback. It's, it's just straight up, here it is. So it's just like your love, your hobby, just your something that you're just gonna yeah, grow with, something to grow with I you? Just think, I just think there, is a great need in a culture that's so saturated by commercialism. There actually has to be a couple of moments in the culture that steps outside of it all, whether you're commenting on politics or you're commenting on social issues yeah. or you're comment commenting on anything, you know, uh, that just really is pure opinion. What happened to pure opinion? Mm -hmm. So what's your thoughts now after doing this on Anna Tour and Vogue? I mean, you. Well, again, I don't really have any particular personal no. thoughts about them. To me, they're all just kind of um, elements of a system that's perceived as a reality by hundreds of millions of people all over the earth. And it really is, you know, uh, uh, it's one of these classic uh, Samokra. Yeah, yeah. They're in the Matrix. Yeah. And I'm, you know, metaphorically, you know, I've been unplugged from the Matrix. You, know, you still feel unplugged. I'm Neo, <laughs> you know, but I am one of, you know, the Zion uh, <laughs> citizens. <laughs> and <laughs> maybe I'm the, you know, the publicist for Zion, <laughs> <laughs> if they had a publicist. And uh, 